Listen. Drop.
Hello DevOps people, I'm back from my holidays and uh, I'm pretty relaxed and uh, recovered. I hope you're fine too. How are you? Let me know in the chat uh, if you had your holidays already or if uh, you're about to leave or if uh, you're not even going on holidays. Uh, I'd like to know. As always, I'd like to make this thing here interactive. So, um, yeah, jump into Twitch chat and uh, let's talk. To be honest, I I am not really sure what I'm going to do today. Um, I haven't had anything pre-planned and um, I've only been uh, back at work since, well, Tuesday and uh, even then uh, I was pretty tired from traveling and stuff and uh, I had to get and I still have to get back uh, into the game and uh, get my mind uh, back into a kind of a rhythm and things like that so um, I apologize for uh, a more spontaneous session here um, There's definitely uh, a few things uh, I could do, and uh, I guess I have a vague idea what I'm going to do, um, and uh, we'll see uh, how this turns out. Well, yeah, uh, I've, I've been away for three weeks, so um, yeah, I, I'm still getting used to things. Um, first, I spent two weeks on uh, Ibiza and uh, enjoyed the sun and the sea. Uh, no, I wasn't uh, going uh, to clubs, but uh, only to beaches. Mostly very solitary beaches that... Um, were mostly used by people having boats. Um, so uh, sometimes we had the whole um, uh, beach for ourselves um, and uh, other times we simply shared the beach with maybe 10 or 12 other people, which uh, was quite the difference to the hotel beaches that were, of course, totally overrun. Um, and I really enjoyed my time. Uh, the kids enjoyed themselves, of course, and uh, uh, I was able to recover. Not that I had to recover much. Uh, I make it sound like I had to get away from things. Um, work is, work is, has been and, and still is pretty uh, quiet at the moment, and everything is running smoothly. Um, so... Um, yeah, but uh, taking a break from time to time is pretty important, and uh, even if it feels like um, one doesn't need a break, um, taking a few days or even weeks off from time to time is really necessary to keep burnout at bay. And uh, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to spend two weeks in Ibiza and then another week um, uh, in Germany visiting family. Um, since uh, my wife and kids are still in Germany enjoying the heat there while I'm enjoying the moderate weather here in Ireland again, um, I have the house for myself and uh, can do whatever I like, and uh, which is uh, live coding now. Mm, not always, but now it's live coding. Okay, enough of that. Um, I guess I'll... I'd like to get started with um, checking our Chef continuous integration because uh, I'm I, uh, while I'm happy that we now have CI for our uh, Chef cookbooks, which automate our whole hosting infrastructure across hundreds of servers, um, I'm still not happy how it works and. Um, I'd like to optimize it a bit and uh, I've heard uh, that uh, 
now our newly built uh, GitLab runner host um, has some issues and uh, so it's important to take a look what's wrong and uh, that's what I'm going to do first. I don't know how much time it'll take and uh, if I'm going to do something else after that, but um, I guess since we are a DevOps um, live coding stream here, um, I can do um, some uh, investigation and debugging on the stream. So, um, the first thing I'd like to tackle is the way um, our tests are set up. And uh, I'll simply change branches here. Everything is checked in, yep. Oh, that's not even the, the correct project. So let's get another TMUX session going for our cookbooks. Um, here I'm also not in the right branch. Let's go back to master. Let's pull the most recent changes. Okay, and I'll add my passphrase to the SSH agent, so I don't have to input the password or passphrase all the time. That's that. And uh, let me show you how our cookbook CI is set up at the moment. So here's the GitLab CI YAML file. Uh, and um, let's also connect VS Code to Twitch. This allows you to use the line command or the highlight command. So it's um, bang line to highlight things here in my editor. So um, we have two things, or three even. Uh, test is the job that uh, should do all the tests. Release is the job that then um, releases a finished change to our chef server and export does an export of a cookbook in our private monorepo to a public GitHub repository for the stuff that we are open sourcing. So my focus will be on the test job here because um, that doesn't work as I'd like it to. What it does is it simply calls the CI test script here and CI test in turn tries to guess what has changed and it does it by, 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 where are we here, by using git diff tree and if and and um, uses all the uh, cookbook directories that are included in this diff tree which is filtered and stuff um, and then it run uh, it runs the tests in this uh, cookbook directory git diff tree doesn't seem to work um, completely as I'd like or as I need it to um, it seems to, uh, at least this command seems to only filter the latest commits and not all the commits and so sometimes it doesn't even run tests even though there has been changes, uh, there have been changes and um, I'd like to see if there is another approach to doing that and uh, what I mean with that is that um, GitLab CI also has a folder conditional uh, for the only 
edition. Let's see, only branches, only tags. No mention of a folder thingy. Only changes. Using the changes keyword with only or except makes it possible to define a job should be if a shop should be created based on files modified by a git push event. Interesting, okay. So I can pretty much yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, I thought there was a folder keyword, but it's uh, changes and then you use uh, a path or a pattern. Okay. So I would have to add such a test block for each and every cookbook directory which would be a bit tedious and very repetitive. However, there is something like a template. It's a, a simple YAML thing, it's not even a GitLab specific thing. Let's see, GitLab CI job template. Not what I'm looking for. It's not job template, but it's in here. Dot tests template job. Template job is it? Okay, template job. All right, so here we have a dot tests. And then we can do, okay, another job that extends this template. Test here. Stage test. Only refs branches and then the only variables dollar spec. Okay. Practice mm. 
need to rename this to dot cookbook. And we'd have no script. And then we'd have to add for each and every cookbook. So let's say we have a cookbook uh, Apache Fries to Test. And this extends dot cookbook and the script would be CD CD source first test break test. And we'd have to have the only changes. Uh, yeah, it's just an array of patterns. So it's a uh, SRC. Yep. Chief Steel. Everything, I guess. Yeah. It's shorter, but still pretty repetitive. like to try and research if there is a best practice for testing in monorepos um, specific directory something like that Start when using mono repos, okay. As of right now, it's only possible to have at most one GitLab server repository on a multiple uh, mono repo. Yeah, uh, two approaches approach use git commit message to explicitly tell which CI jobs to run. Yeah, that doesn't sound like something that's sustainable. So, yeah, 
that that's, that looks like a good idea to have a variable that we can overwrite because that will take away a bit of the repetition. Variables. I think it's even Apache 2 for Istino, so... should name this cookbook test. to move this up to the cookbook test definition. So, oh, this is pretty minimal now. four lines for each cookbook. Okay. Well, we still have quite a few cookbooks. Not all of them will need this, but most of them do. So this approach too looks a bit more sophisticated. It requires additional software. Do we need this ampersand something? Looks like it.
Hmm. Okay. Tests. These cookbook tests should only run in branches as well. How does that work? Um, Why, why limit it to branches? If there were changes, we should run the tests. Okay. So, let's uh, commit this and give it a try. And let's see if uh, the test is triggered or not. Uh, for this I need to create an issue. If there isn't one already. Nothing recent. testing and I get issue number 462 which I always use as the prefix for my branch and GitLab um, is clever enough to uh, recognize the branch name and associate it with the issue so let's branch of 462 CI config and uh, yeah I'll, I'll add that Use 
Yamo template blocks twenty five. Oh, really? No. Define CI tests for each cookbook. And now I'll create a test branch that will not be merged into our repository where I can do dummy changes. So let's see. Um, let's call it CI test. And since we have uh, defined two t uh, cookbook tests here, um, I'll simply go into Apache 2 Frysteel and I'll add a file and when I push this branch we can see what is going to happen. Oh, YAML invalid. Okay. Jobs Apache oh, test only config should be an array of strings or regex. Okay, so since we don't define an only in Apache Frosted tests, this should be up here. It's only changes colon and then an array. Oh, I need to use strings here. Okay. to cherry pick this fix. Still YAML invalid. Test only config should be an array of strings or regaps. Oh yeah, I can see what I did on the um, Changes is a hash key and not an array entry. Somehow I got a dash before that. Okay, let's uh, even. in here since we are in a test branch that's not shared with anyone uh, I can rewrite history as I see fit come on variables config should be a hash of key value pairs Oh, 
but I think I have to add Do I? Not necessarily. But still, it might be the better choice. This is seven seven one. Forced update nine six B one. Yep. Um. Variables config should be a hash of key value pairs. Maybe I'm just too tired to read correctly. So we have variables colon. Under that. It's uh, key value pairs divided by columns. Okay, just to be sure. in front of it. What is it with these dashes? That's the real problem here. Yeah. That's that. these pipeline numbers. So we have 940. got a run yet has it let's give it a try um, it's CI test don't have to set any variables I guess going to run 
both of these. That's unexpected. Okay, this dollar cookbook doesn't work. Or does it? Yeah, okay, it does work. All right, and uh, how about the other pipeline? Should be consistently a dash. Here it tries to run the tests and then. Okay, yeah, I see. Of course, um, we'll have to. Set another variable here. Kitchen local yaml dot kitchen dot docken dot yaml. That way, right test and test kitchen will use the right test definition. Why did it run both jobs? That doesn't make any sense to me. When pushing a new branch, the policy always evaluates to true. Okay. So, yeah, that is a bummer. That's more or less the end of it, because uh, simply creating a new branch must not uh, trigger tests for all cookbooks in the repository. That's with a growing monorepo. That's uh, that's simply a no-go. We can, however, 
limit tests to merge requests. an alt alternative um, fine-tune this CI test command here git diff tree no commit ID name only origin master to the current head Mm-hmm. And if I touch another file... And add that one... to origin master that looks good to me maybe I'm making things too complicated simply limit this test to branches because we're comparing them to origin master and uh, that should more or less do the trick So I can basically um, revert everything I had. And I can go back to what was the issue number four, six, something? Four, six, two. Only thing 
we can simply say only dash branches. Later, use something for merges or merge requests. That could be something even more sophisticated, but I'm fine with this so far. Um. Test branch. And now we'll create a new one. We'll touch a file in Rolls Fry Steel. Change it to Rolls Fry Steel and it starts the test suite. Nice. And that's uh, what my colleague Marcus told me. Somehow we can't connect to the Docker host anymore. Which is strange because the, the whole thing here runs on Docker. But it's not on port 2375 anymore. So something must have changed on our GitLab runner host. Port number two, three, seven, five. This is the 
phones. GCP Docker 2375 as the Docker host. Okay. Docker, Docker in Docker, which uses the last one. I don't need any more at 2375, but at 2376. Interesting. Two days ago. So, do we simply... Uh, I wonder why uh, Leandro here switched back to an older image instead of using the new port number. The top of your GitLab series of very specific changes. Okay. Something I can live with. And uh, even with that change, it should still run tests for the Rolls cookbook. So it's not quite something on the GitLab host. Oof. But rather on the image. But this looks at least interesting. There. This doesn't look good. Could not change group found, docker suck to docker, group docker not found. Look. No, 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 this doesn't look good. However, seems to run. Maybe I should simply... Oh, these are all warnings, okay. Maybe... Uh, 
at least it's ugly, even if this works, and I'm not sure if it works or if it's just hanging here. Oh, it's not hanging. Interesting. Let's see. Yeah, it does run. Again, I think this uh, docker image thing is the only change I really need because uh, limiting the test to branches only doesn't really make sense if the CI test script can reliably detect changes. Um, we check out any branch, including the master branch, and then compare it to origin master. Well, for GitLab, origin master is where all the stuff came from, so origin master should never be different to head if we've just cloned origin master into head. So it doesn't run tests for the master branch. Maybe I simply remembered that incorrectly. Uh, and just to be sure, I'll Go ahead and uh, change my issue. To this here. more specific. And we can 
use this link as a reference. I guess this will keep running for a while. So let's see. Um, commits and then I'll I can simply reset let's reset to this <laughs> and then I go ahead and uh, line here tests run if tests do not run For master anyway, because uh, our command cannot detect changes to master if it's just been cloned from master. We can actually say only branches. That way we don't have unnecessary test runs. System control, net data service not found. There's something wrong in the setup here, but that's not what I'm going to debug now. Okay. Mm.
Okay. This should not launch any cookbook tests because I haven't changed any cookbooks. But it does pull the right Docker image. And I guess I'll go ahead and create a merge request. Also triggers a CI run, not to worry. No change cookbooks, job succeeded. Oh, the merge requests didn't even trigger another pipeline. Okay, brilliant. So I guess um, I'll go right ahead and, and merge this into master. This pipeline uh, should now... Oh, it does run a test. Interesting. Okay, fine. Uh, let's check out the master. Put in change. And this lets us delete 462. We can also delete CM test. So let's declare our CI system operational again. Okay, so I feel a bit tired, so uh, apparently I still have, haven't had enough sleep since uh, my late night trip a few days ago, and uh, let's put it this way, a few World of Warcraft sessions until late uh, didn't help either. So I guess I'm, I'm going to um, wrap things up here. And uh, I guess uh, I'll be a bit more productive uh, when I'm back on Saturday. Saturday at 3.30 p.m. British and Irish time. I'll be back with a bit more of a plan, I promise. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that. So um, let me update my stream 
notes. I uh, can, can show you how they look like. Uh, I've today started to, uh, to take uh, stream notes in Notion. Um, we've been using Notion as our company wiki and knowledge base for quite some time and only today I got the idea to, to use it for personal stuff as well. Uh, so, um, fix chef cookbook CI, fix chef cookbook CI, that's, what did we learn? Uh, recent change to the DIND, Docker image caused Test kitchen runs to fail. Next steps. Better plan. Next session on Saturday. Okay. That's that. I guess uh, that's a good point to wrap it up. Thank you for following Savation uh, or Savation. Um, thanks for following. I really appreciate it. Happy to have you on the stream, and I hope to see you again on Saturday. Um, yeah. So if you haven't followed this stream yet, please click the follow button uh, so you get a notification. I'll also export this session to um, YouTube. Well, will I? There's not too much to see. On the other hand, uh, yeah, why not? Um, I'll export to YouTube and you can find that on youtube.fullstacksensei.com and um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. So you get uh, notified when I upload new uh, recordings. Um, I'll um, store them there because uh, Twitch will remove the VODs after two or three weeks, I think. And um, so that's that. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch, you can also follow my Twitter account at Chibiz. Um I'm happy about any, uh, every tweet I get there. And um, I'll also announce live coding streams there, especially if they are spontaneous. That's that. Um, so for today, thanks for watching. I hope um, it was interesting for you, even though um, in the end um, I more or less did a 360 and only fixed the Docker image. But uh, that's how things are in IT sometimes. And um, I can live with that. So uh, yeah, I hope you had a good time. I definitely had it and uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Until then, thank you and uh, take care.